Hello, my fellow Caspians. Uh, this is your friend James. Actually, I go by Jim, but for some reason I'm James in the channel. Not sure why that is. Maybe it's because it sounds more respectable. Maybe I'm trying to put on some kind of front that, um, that I'm more than Jim. I'm James. Anyway, I wanted to take a look at the Caspa chart because I think we've got something that has developed and something that may be developing that, that, um, that makes this chart uh, more and more interesting. And I'm going to also throw out some ideas here. It's a little bit of theory as well. So this is going to be more, uh, more than just a, a look at the CASPA chart, but also a bit of a look about how some patterns develop and why certain patterns develop and do what they do. First thing is, um, if you start, um, you, you can't start your chart with this extreme low here at MEXC when, when CASPA first listed. As a matter of fact, I'm sort of of the opinion that a lot of the stuff that happened in the initial weeks and maybe even the first couple, two or three months is not particularly reliable because at that point in time, we had so few players uh, in the market. And that's why when you look at, for example, <laughs> if you have an, uh, an initial public offering of a stock, uh, let's say when Facebook first came public, uh, you looked at that chart and you go, you can't make no sense out of it. Why is that? Because you don't have enough data. You just don't have enough um, of the back and forth pull between buyers and sellers and you don't have a mature audience or participants in that market to where you can start to see the way the mob is working. So back here, we had a very small mob. We've got a much larger mob here. So how much is this large mob dependent upon the actions of a smaller mob? Okay, uh, from this point forward, CASPA, I believe, has enough of an audience and enough market participants to where, as we continue to go forward, things become more and more reliable. But there are a couple features just the same. This may be a long video, so fix yourself a cup of coffee. Um, first off, even though this was very early, we, we formed a descending channel in, this, in the form of a wedge. That would project an eventual breakout and a return to at least where that uh, wedge started to form. We did that plus some, then we entered a period of pretty uh, miserable downward trading. But well, we went from uh, just under a penny to about, uh, uh, to just under half a penny, lost about 50% broke out of that descending channel. Then we had that nice run up to what was the all-time high at about uh, a little bit over four cents. And we started to slide back again. And that is when we formed an inverted head and shoulders pattern. And I am confident that this is an inverted head and shoulders pattern. And I'm gonna tell you why. If we zoom in on this a little bit, one of the things that a, an inverted head and shoulders pattern or any head and shoulders pattern typically does, even though this purple line is the neckline, it's very typical for the right inverted shoulder to form on a back test of broken resistance. And if we look at, if we sort of look at these peaks that were in play uh, early April through May, and we draw a trend line there, you can see that we broke that trend line, okay? Then we back tested that line. So left shoulder forms on a dip, the head forms on a bigger dip, but when we get out of the head, we break a line of resistance, and then the right shoulder back tests that line, and that is an inverted head and shoulders pattern. That pattern is why I have, <clears throat> it's almost become a meme at this point, 0.068. But that pattern is why 
I still think we're going to get to at least 0.068. I suspect we will do better than that, but that is the minimum target. Okay, now let's uh, zoom in a little bit. A number of people, uh, by the way, after, after, we, uh, after we broke out from that, it, it became apparent that it looked like, well, it became apparent that it looked like, I guess that's sort of redundant, but we, we uh, entered in what appeared to be a rising channel between these two yellow lines. Uh, now, one thing that happened is we, we had, after the breakout, we had an initial move up, a little bit of a pullback. Then we set a new all-time high, then a more significant pullback, then a little bit of a rally. And a lot of people are looking at this and they're thinking, oh, that is a head and shoulders top. Um, and I, I think that that idea had some merit, still might have some merit. But I'm going to challenge that a little bit. And the reason I'm going to challenge that is because, first off, we were in a rising channel when the what some are thinking is a left shoulder formed. And I don't really see this necessarily as being a, 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 a particular technical um, importance. I just think we were in a channel. Um, so it's not like this is a major development over here as much as it is, I think, we were just going from point A to point B, and about halfway through, we encountered a little bit of resistance before we got to B. The other reason I think that may not be the case, that this, is, that this may not be uh, a head and shoulders top, is because the right shoulder did not form on any kind of a back test. Matter of fact, we didn't break support until after that, quote, right shoulder formed. Okay? And when we broke the neckline, it was really sort of a non-event. We just sort of slid down. And the head and shoulders typically results in a more tumultuous move, a stronger move when it breaks down. So it was a it was a weak breakdown. And I think if you'll remember I was in the channel saying this isn't acting right. This really isn't acting like like a head and shoulders pattern. But the other reason, and this is what what I really want to point out here, let's go to a four hour chart and zoom in here stretch that out a little bit. I think, instead of a head and shoulders, I think what we have, I think we have a bull flag. And that is this gray area right here. We broke out from that uh, uh, this past week, and now we're in a little bit of a pullback after having broken out from that. Um, It's also worth noting that we have a trend line right here, this purple line, that makes this look like it might be what? Might be an inverted head and shoulders pattern. And if it is, remember what we said about it, you know, head and shoulders tops and inverted head and shoulders bottoms, the right shoulder often forms on a back test. Well, look at this bull flag if assuming that's what it is. And I can't be 100% certain here. Things can change. But that would be the line of resistance that we broke out over. And if we now come down, let's say, maybe to 356, 357, or, or not even that far, but <clears throat> it looks like maybe we have a right shoulder forming now on a back test. Now I've been charting the S&P 500 every day since 2010. That's now 13 years. And one thing I've noticed, it is, it is first off, I've noticed the fact that the right shoulder tends to form on a back test. The second thing is, a lot of inverted head and shoulders patterns, the right shoulder not only forms on a back test, it forms on a back test in the shape of a descending wedge. 
which is an inherently bullish pattern. And so far, and I'm not saying we have to continue this, but so far, this is a descending wedge. So if my wild idea is correct, then what, what, what might be, can't talk, what might we be looking at? Well, maybe a little continued slide down, maybe fully back testing this, uh, this broken line of resistance, then a return, because this is a wedge, and a wedge, what happens? A wedge, when it breaks out, wants to bring you back to about where it formed, so that would mean a return to our purple line, which would be a, a test for a breakout of yet another potential inverted head and shoulders pattern. Now, my outlook on this is colored. And why is it colored? Because we have a confirmed inverted head and shoulders pattern right here. And it tells us, with about 75 to 80% certainty, to expect a trip to very close to seven cents. So <clears throat> with that background, it's real easy to see that this could very well be a pattern that is setting up for a rally and for a move to satisfy what is built up into this larger inverted head and shoulders pattern. Now you're seeing a red line down here, and I won't explain what that is. Uh, if I was just sort of, I was just sort of doing a little experiment here. I said, okay, let's pretend like this is actually an important level back here. Originally, by the way, <clears throat> I was drawing uh, the, the support line like that, and I think that was that was still a good support line, but it broke, okay, and that's when we formed the large inverted head and shoulders pattern, but. A lot of times you will you'll see that support lines uh, can multiple support lines can have an origin from a similar point. So we know now that this is an important lower level because that's the bottom of that inverted head and shoulders pattern. Just so happens if you shoot that line out to the right, that's what we tagged this past week, earlier this week. So it'll be interesting to see how this how this plays out. Um, and it's worth noting that this lower line, if it is correct, is roughly parallel to our upper line of resistance. Uh, now, in a perfect world, you might say, wow, that, that line of resistance up there, that's on up there. If we hit that, we're going to be up around 32 cents. Well, I, I'm not, I, I, I would not say that we're going to hit that line. I rather think that we would stay underneath this yellow, this lower yellow line, since that was support and it broke. It should be uh, in a typical chart that we never get back over this yellow line, but clearly it is moving up at a pitch that would allow for tremendous growth, you know, going forward. So that, that's not a problem at all. So here's the thing. This is an inverted head and shoulders pattern. It's confirmed by a breakout. This smaller pattern might be an inverted head and shoulders pattern. And it is not confirmed yet. There it is. This would be left shoulder, head, and now perhaps forming the right shoulder as I do this video. The target, by the way, from this pattern, if it were to break out, let's say, uh, in the middle of uh, September, our target from this pattern would be probably just kind of eyeballing it, five and a half cents. So that should be sufficient for us to set a new all-time high. But again, I, I don't think we would stop there because we, we have a, a more significant target in our sights. <coughs> so anyway, thanks for letting me hopefully entertain you 
with this video for a little bit and, and hopefully uh, we'll see if I'm right or if I'm wrong. I could be either. But uh, so far that that the large inverted head and shoulders pattern, that, that to me seems to be the predominant feature on this chart. And, uh, and they have a, a really a very impressive record of achieving what they uh, what they project. So anyway, thanks for watching. And if you got a spare CASPA, you could just I'm giving you an address in in this uh, description of this video, and I'm not going to turn you down. Thanks.